So far, working with only a form wasn't very exciting. In this topic, we will place a few components on the form and explore their properties. In the standard tab of the component palette, you can find standard components. When you hover your mouse over the pictures, a small yellow text tab displays the name or the type of component that you are pointing to. To add a component like a button, you simply click on the icon. After you clicked on it, you will see that it is pressed in. Now, move your mouse pointer to the area on the form where you want to place the component and click on the form. The button is now placed on the form in the area where you wanted to place it. The name of the button is button 1 by default. You can now also see that the button's name is added to the object tree view under the form's name. The object tree view indicates to us that the button is a child of the form by putting its name on a new level or a new node under the form. We also refer to the form as the parent or the container of the components placed on its surface. Let's also add the label component. Hover your mouse pointer over the picture in your component palette until you find the component that you want to use. After creating a few applications, you will be able to identify a component by just looking at its picture. You saw that I can add a component by clicking on it and then by clicking somewhere on the form. But another way to add a component is by double clicking on it. I will do that with this label. When you double click on a component in the component palette, it is placed directly in the center of the form. To place it somewhere else on the form, you can click on it and drag it into the required position. Notice that the label's default name is label 1 in the object tree view. And also notice that the label is a child of the form, just like the button. Let me show you another trick. Let's add 4 edits to the form. I can add them one by one like I did with the button. Or, I can double click on the edits picture 4 times and then move them into the correct locations on the form like I did with the label. However, there is another way to place multiple instances of the same component on the form. You do it by pressing the shift key down on your keyboard. And while holding it down, move to the components picture. In this case, the edit component and click on it. Notice the blue border that appears around the component. You can now release the shift key and click anywhere on the form to place the edit in its position. Now, move to another location of the form and click again to place the second edit. And do the same for the third and the fourth edits. If you keep on clicking on the form, you will keep on adding edits. To stop this behavior, move to the component palette and click on the white arrow or pointer icon. Now, if you click on the form again, nothing happens. Notice that all the edits that I placed on the form receive default names like edit 1, edit 2 and so on. And they are also children of the form. Sometimes it is necessary to remove components from your form. For example, with the previous action I wanted to put only 4 edits on the form, but I accidentally added the 5th edit. To remove a component, you simply click it to select it, and then you press the delete key on your keyboard. As you can see, the layout of the components on the form is quite messy. So let's change the properties of the components to make it look nicer. To change a property of a component, you must first select it. I mentioned it before, but I will say it again. If you forget to first select the component that you want to change, it can happen that you make changes on another component, and that can be very frustrating. So make a habit of it to observe the IDE. Here are a few things that you can look at. Firstly, a component is selected if it has little black boxes on its edges and corners. We call that handles. You simply click on the component to select it, and the handles will display. Secondly, the selected component's name will be highlighted in the object tree view. See how the highlight jumps from one component to another as I'm changing my selections. Finally, the name of the component that you select will display in the object inspector. Also see how the name changes as I'm changing my selections. Sometimes you must change the same property for multiple components to the same value. It goes faster if you select multiple components and then change their properties. For example, I can select a few components together, like these three edits, by just dragging over them. When you drag over the components, the drag lines only have to touch the components that you want to select together, and when you release your mouse button, all of the components that you touch will have handles. Also notice that the object inspector now indicates that three items are selected. Now, let's use these methods to select components and change some of their properties. Let's first select the button. Initially, a button's name is displayed on its surface. That is the caption of the button. In this case, it is button 1. 
but I want to change the caption to click on me. To do that, I go to the caption property and change it to click on me. Notice how the text on the button changes to the words click on me when I type it into the caption property. To resize the button, I can drag the handles to change the width and height properties. Notice how the width property changes after I drag the handle. You can also change the dimension of a button by directly typing the required sizes into the width and the height properties, just like we did with the form earlier. The label also has a caption property that we want to change. I want to change it to display the words exploring forms and components. First, I will select the label called Label 1 and then I will go to the caption property and change it. Notice how the caption changes as I'm changing the property. I want to move the label to the top of the form. I can do that in two ways. The easy way is to just drag the label into its required position. The second way is to set the top and left properties. I will use the drag method but also keep your eye on the top and left properties in the object inspector. See how these properties change after I move the label. I also want to change the font of the label. While the label is still selected, I will scroll to the font property and click on it. Notice the little button with the dots in the cell next to the font property's name. When I click on the button, a font dialog window pops up. In here I can change the name of the font. If I have a specific font in mind, I can just type the first few characters in the font text box to narrow it down. I want to use Tahoma, so I will just type T-A-H and then select Tahoma from the list. I want to make the font style bold and the size 16. In the sample area, you can preview the selections and when you are happy, you can click on the OK button. Notice how the label changed. If the new font is bigger than the original font, the size of the label will automatically adjust to accommodate the new font size. Now let's change the edits. I want to clear all the edits, in other words, I want to remove the text displayed in them. I can of course do that by selecting one edit at a time. But I want to save some time, so I will select all the edits by dragging over all of them. The object inspector shows me that I selected 4 items and I can also see the handles of all the edits. There is also another way to select multiple components. Let me show you. I press the shift key on my keyboard and while I'm holding it down, I click on all the edits I want to change. Now I scroll to the text property and click on it. Then I press the delete key on my keyboard and delete the text. Notice that all the edits are now without text. Now you probably wonder why I didn't use the caption properties of the edits to make the changes like I did with the form and the button and the label. The reason for that is because the edit doesn't have a caption property. It has a text property. Components that only display text to the users, in other words components that are read only, has captions. However, a user can type custom text into an edit. It is therefore not read-only, and it has a text property and not a caption property. I want to also align all my edits. The left sides must line up with the left side of the button. Let's first select the button to find out what its left property is. There I can see that it is 48, so I want to also change all the edits left properties to 48. I do this by doing a multi-select again. I drag over all the edits and then I change the left properties all at the same time to 48. The left property is a number that determines the distance from the left edge of the container, in other words the left hand border of the form. Finally, I want to make the spaces between the edits more or less equal. So I will use the dots on the form to guide me when I drag them into position. Ok, that was fun. You have seen many things now. Go and try it yourself. Remember, practice makes perfect. In the next lesson, we will learn how to work with Delphi files, how to save your programs and how to transfer Delphi files from one drive to another. I'll talk to you again in the next lesson.